everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It has been a while since I've been able to record, live stream, post any episodes or anything, and before I get into what we're doing today, I will give you a brief explanation as to why. Uh, my weekends have been taken up, and my evenings for that matter, <clears throat> um, by flight school. I'm actually uh, pursuing a lifelong dream of mine, which is to get my private pilot's license. Those of you who watched my episodes of Flight Simulator FS2, uh, or I'm sorry, Aerofly FS2 <clears throat> um, in the uh, in the Oculus Rift with all my controls and everything can uh, kind of appreciate this because I mentioned it there as well. But I am actually uh, taking classes and I'm uh, accumulating hours towards my private pilot license. I have gotten as far as getting my student license, and it's or I've gotten my student license. I'm pretty close to getting solo, maybe two lessons away or so, and then a check ride. Um, and then I'm solo certified in a Cessna 182 out of my local airport where I'm taking my classes at. So that is really exciting stuff. Uh, you guys can look forward to me getting a GoPro and uh, filming uh, my solo experience and uh, recording that uh, whole thing along with you guys and maybe uh, including some Aerofly FS2 or something with the, with the other one. We'll make a show, a presentation out of it. But that is not why we're here today. What we're here today for is for an extended play episode of A Fresh Start in No Man's Sky. And the reason I'm starting off fresh, I've cleared out all my save data, is because No Man's Sky has received a gigantic update. Uh, they have uh, update 1.3 dropped uh, right around the one year anniversary of No Man's Sky. And what the 1.3 upgrade includes is basically all this, more or less all the stuff that Sean Murray had talked about releasing uh, in, in the original game. Sort of those promises that he had made to the interviews and stuff like that. Now there's a lot of controversy around this. If you're watching news, if you go check, uh, search YouTube for No Man's Sky 1.3, <clears throat> there um like, for instance, if you watch The No or, or anything, or if you watch DM21 Gaming, um, there are a lot of mixed opinions about the whole No Man's Sky experience, and all of those opinions are valid. From my perspective, I will say, the release game, it was a good game, it was a decent game, it was fun, you know, exploring was fun, got a little tedious at times, I'm not gonna lie, um, <clears throat> and then the race for the center of the universe, I just, I gave up, I was like, what's even the point? Um, They added some great things in the, in the next couple of updates, 1.1, 1.2. I never did play 1.2, <clears throat> um, but the 1.1 being able to do bases and stuff like that. But the base building sort of got to a point and then ended and didn't have anything to do with the main story. Well, 1.3 wraps all that together into a cohesive narrative now. Um, I played my save game, I uh, continued it on in the 1.3 update, made some progress, got some new discoveries, learned some interesting stuff over the last couple of days, and then realized <clears throat> I really need to just start over from scratch, because the whole story um, hasn't been rewritten necessarily, but it's been retooled. So that's a much more uh, seamless and um, enjoyable and useful start to the game. So that's what we're going to get into right now. I've been blathering at this microphone without any real gameplay for four minutes. Um, I'm surprised you guys are still watching. But if you are, here we are getting into a fresh start of this game, which should be showing its title any second now, right here, right now, at this time, in this place, initialize for No Man's Sky. So I did play a little bit of the game to, uh, introduction to the, sorry, I'm interrupting her, <clears throat> uh, through the beginning of the game, through, uh, the, through some of the first quests and things and sort of getting on the story. Um, there's a there's a fourth race in the game now, which uh, is going to be coming up soon enough. 
If you aren't interested, interested in enjoying the story elements along with me, I will say, tell you right now. This whole series is going to be gigantic spoiler alert. Basically, we're going to play No Man's Sky. We're going to play No Man's Sky, Atlas Rising, the good parts. The first couple of episodes will be pretty inclusive of the actual full experience of getting yourself into space. But then we'll just start recording and doing stuff uh, when uh, important plot elements <clears throat> are developing and moving along. Other than that, you know, the basic stuff of playing the game, of exploration, a lot of the exploration, a lot of the materials gathering and things like that. Uh, you won't see as much of that. Although, I will say, No Man's Sky is all about that. The three pillars this game is built on is exploration, and they've done a better job of actually making exploration worth it for the money. Gathering resources, <clears throat> and using those resources for upgrades and uh, uh, upgrades and what, 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 how am I going to say this? Basically, fuel for all your stuff. So our toxic thing is chewing down here. We're obviously on a toxic planet, which means we'll see a lot of fungal forms. But here we are outside of our crashed ship. <clears throat> now, one thing I want to do first of all is ring up the new pause menu. And we can take a look at all the new information that's available here. So we now know already this much about this planet. The menus look fabulous and work much better. <clears throat> um, so we're in the, the Duena system in, you know what, I'm just going to re rename this in <clears throat> there we go. I like to take inspiration from the names of things. So this system is the Rick or this planet is Rikya in the Duena system. We'll just upload that as it is. <clears throat> and we've already got 7,000 units just from those two things alone. But now also we have our journey, which tells us all of our milestones we have. The Gek, the Viking. Corvax, Merchants Guilds, all this kind of stuff. And we have a log, <clears throat> which tells us exactly what we're supposed to be doing in the game. So, first thing we're going to do is investigate our crashed ship. Iteration such and such online. Atlas connection. Intermittent. Launch thrusters offline. Pulse engine offline. Pilot multi tool critically damaged. I have awoken near a crashed starship. I can only assume it belongs to me, though I have no memory of it, no sense of a before. The crash must have affected my memory somehow. Request log unavailable, submitting data. Exosuit connected. Suggestion. Pilot should perform maintenance. Guidance available. Prioritize which system. Let's get our multi-tool fixed. So we get to choose that as our first item. Local area scanner offline. Analysis visor offline. Repair sequence initiated. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. And here we are. Bingo. So in our pause menu, we have the um, <clears throat> the log available. It says we're going to use iron to repair the analysis visor. Gather iron from mineral deposits. Use mouse to fire mining beam and enter my materials. Da, da, da. So you can see that basically the tutorial on getting started in this game is vastly improved. So here's an nearby target. Shoot at it. Turns out this isn't iron. Psst, I already knew that. But for newbie experiences, we'll go ahead and uh, pretend I didn't know that. That's an exotic material that I can't mine yet. 
Oh, and that's another thing. Common planets, even, have exotic materials. Basically, they give you reasons to advance right away. And we have some iron. Do we have enough? Let's flip over to our multi-tool. <clears throat> we can fix both the scanner and the... Uh... There you have it. And we can recharge this with a leftover carbon. All right, so we now have the capability of scanning with the C key. The C resources around us. And analyzing plants with the F key. At the beginning part of the game, scanning and uploading your stuff is going to be one of your primary sources of income. And you can scan a lot more things to get more information about it. <clears throat> like these sentinels. I'm just scanning everything in range. And you can see, <clears throat> I mean, it's not a lot of units, but when I actually upload those to Atlas, then uh, I will get a lot of money for it. So around our crash ship, we do have some resources we can pick up. A damage container, this is a new mechanic, uh, whereby <clears throat> we, were, we remove stuff to be able to open the container. Which then gives us more stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, that rust, <clears throat> that is a sellable thing. A shielding shard. Pop bung those over to our ship. Uh, you know what, actually, no, that's fine. Send that over to the ship as well. Damaged machinery. Oh, and debris. Here we go. Iteration such and such, that's a different iteration for me. <clears throat> Transferred, deleted. Probable boundary separation failure, vessel 16 emptied. Sentinel intervention, deliberate transfer unknown. Diagnostic, no connection. Analysis, awaiting fresh iteration. Anomaly containment prepared. Let's broadcast. Traveler anomaly detected. Position logged, system integrity scan initialized. Anomaly is compliant. Um, we need more iron for these car sheets. <clears throat> so it's telling us right there how much iron we need. Let's go down this hill. Scan everything while you're walking. I mean, you might as well. So we're going to get right after it. <clears throat> really? I'm being attacked by sentinels. Die, sentinel. I guess I didn't like how much I was um, mining stuff. Well, <clears throat> there's no sense leaving without getting a full stack of iron. And in my backpack, uh, a stack of iron is 250 units. Now I'm gonna play this game and mention information as though, ooh, hello. As though you, the viewer, has never seen it before. Hey, we already we already saw ourselves novice and destroyed a sentinel. There is a point of interest nearby. Now, if you want to save yourself a little bit of time and you find some plutonium, scan it first. So I scanned the big cluster, the little clusters. 
And what this tells me now is that see I can get some Thamium 9 as a secondary resource for mining these. That is a ton of plutonium. I love it. Sentinel's gonna be pissed. My toxic protection is running a bit low. Ow, freaking, I got attacked by a plant. There are hostile plants that'll whip you psh, as you go by. You know, there's no good place for me to park my camera because you're missing this whole lower right hand section of my HUD. I know one thing I can do. Here, let me get my ship and fix this one second. You know what? That's pretty good. You can see me well enough. You can read the text behind me if you really want to. Um, <clears throat> so we need to build a whole bunch of car right sheets. And we have one. Hit E, build it, build it. And that allows us to fix the launch thruster. And I've burned through all my iron. But I know for the pulse engine, I need one more car right sheet. And some heridium. Um, can't take off with a, with a pulse engine critically damaged. So what is it this thing needed to get fixed again? So this is kind of a new fun mechanic. Uh, to open this stuff up, you have to fix it. Superconductive lock. We need some iron, heridian, and carbon. <clears throat> and I will give you this piece of advice. If you're carrying stuff in your exosuit that you're not going to immediately use, bomb it over to your ship. Just don't even worry about it. Iridium, I know that I'm not going to need that right now. At the beginning of the game, <clears throat> it is definitely best to just sell everything you don't absolutely need right then. This. Ow, I should have shot that thing. That was that hostile plant. Well, we know we need some iron. Once again. And again, I'll just mine up a full stack of this stuff here. As I get upgrades for my multi-tool, this mining will become easier. Um, I have noticed on my recent uh, re experimental restart before I started filming um, <clears throat> that iron, or that the, uh, shut up, and the multi-tool upgrades, or upgrades in general, tend to come more slowly. But because it's at a more measured pace, uh, you don't feel like you're falling way behind by not having them. Yeah, look at this. There's a building over here. Let's go check it out. We know we need heridium. So we're keeping an eye out for that. There's plutonium off there. Heridium will be a big blue stack. An almost vertical stack of rather shiny light blue material. And this trick still works. Q jetpack <clears throat> to get over big uh, gaps. Q is your melee attack, by the way. Hey, how are we doing on the plutonium stocks? We can use more. And because I scanned this plutonium on this planet, uh, it gives me thamium as well, a little bit. Oh, itchy. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> so here we found our first point of interest, other than our starship. Let's give it a quick look around here. What's this? Nothing. It's just a light. Hey, I can pick up some free plant material. Anytime you see a plant that looks like it might be new that you haven't scanned it before, eh, just hit it with the F key. Let's see if it'll scan. Anything good in here? Ooh, hello. 
So, sample collection gives me standing with the locals, I th or with the GEC anyway. <clears throat> uh, most of these things, instead of giving you technologies directly, now just give you nanites, and you'll expose, uh, spend those nanites uh, in exchange for technology upgrades. Let's put plutonium up there. Oh, I'd love to have some heridium in the vicinity. Uh, I'm not seeing any. So all I really need to do now <clears throat> is keep running around until I find some heridium. And our starship will be up and functional. If I wanted to, I could spend a lot more time exploring this planet. And it would be worthwhile to do so because there are lots of things... My scanning beam is low on juice. Um, there's plenty of platinum to be had. In fact, I can just find some more right here. Like I have nearly a full stack of platinum. I prefer using platinum to store to fill most of my stuff because it's it's a dense energy source. I do need to keep an eye out for some thamium though because my life support system is going to need to get refilled here. Thamium is one of the rarer things to find, and it's one of the most important. You need it to for life support, and I need it for your warp drive for warp drive fuel. It's like one of the few limiting factors as far as being able to advance in the game really quickly, actually. Lack of Thamium. Grab some Nanites. Three carbon. All right, still on the hunt. Oh, let's go ahead and activate this and clean, the, clean out these lockers. This rusted metal that I'm collecting, it, um, it's just a commodity to be sold, really. But since we're early in the game, a lot of my money is going to be made from, initially, from that rusted material uh, in conjunction with turning in uh, all of my scans. Uploading all my scans to Atlas. Where's my ship? Way over there? Okay. Let me get on top of this hill and see if I can't find a iridium stack from up here. They did say in the in the patch notes, <clears throat> among the things they did was make iridium more plentiful. And let's go ahead and just recharge the thing that I have. So I'm just scanning the horizon. To see what I can find. There is pretty much no heridium in sight. Getting started on this world is proving to be a bit of a pain. But we're 25 minutes in. Uh, the first episode is going to be as it as it typically is for any new series that I start. Is going to be a uh, this is Thamium. I'm going to pick it up. Uh, a, uh, an extended play, 45 minutes long or so. And then... We will have our normal... Sort of episode timing. Uh, like I said before, it's gonna be, uh... No Man's Sky, Atlas Rising, the good parts. In future episodes, I won't spend this much time just running around exploring. I'll do that off camera and then do uh, and mining off camera Unless it's relevant to a, a plot development like if we're working on a particular um, Quest or storyline element 
keep picking up that rest of material. Yeah. Oh. Send the Viking dagger over to my ship. And a Gek Charm. Right now, those are worth money more than anything. Ooh, a big shielding plate. I like it. Damium. Always collecting it when I can. Plutonium over there, zinc. <gasps> Another technology capsule they can't fix because I can't find any stupid, um, <laughs> iridium. Nanite clusters. Anything else? All right. Those nanite clusters will come in really handy in a while. They're not terribly handy right now. Got some new creatures on the horizon here that I've never seen before. Interesting little guys. This right here is an interesting little artifact, this sort of cylindrical thing. Um, <clears throat> it's a knowledge stone. In order to communicate with other species, that might be Heridium over there. I do believe that it is. Yep, found it, all right. Found the Gek word for give. How's my toxic? Okay, we need to get moving. Thamium. If I have any zinc, I can use it to recharge my toxic shield. But the environmental protection shield recharges itself over time as long as it's not being exposed to hazards. However, very few planets are without hazards of some kind. If you find an idyllic planet that's hazard free, full of life, and with those are quite rare now I have, from what I've seen, um, set up a base. <laughs> I say there's a platform I haven't seen before. Okay. <clears throat> we'll run. We'll do the old Q dash jetpack thing. Hover over the ground really fast. Run some more. Because the heridium's right over there. There's a nice cave I can go into if my uh, radiation protection is getting down low. Got plenty of thamium. So you've been noticing there's a menu option now to bring my ship. Um, I wonder if that's enabled <clears throat> right now. I don't think it is. You know what? Yeah, that 85% uh, kind of see through me and see what's going on behind me there. 85% transparency, I think, is the way to go. This is a huge stack of radium. Because I know I'm going to need lots of it, I'll get two stacks. Really? Send off to get charm and the nanite cluster, sorry. So, like I said, when we do get space worthy um, and we're able to trade stuff, just get rid of anything you're not using right away. You don't want to be stuck carrying it around. It takes up too much inventory. At first, your inventory slots are way too valuable. We'll be able to stack up 500 iridium and then move it all to the starship. And the reason I'm doing that is because the starship uh, is able to carry 500 iridium in a single, in a single, oh. Well, hell. If we got room in the inventory for it, let's grab it, because it's worth money. There we go. <clears throat> I'm a little bit surprised Sentinels didn't show up with all that heavy mining I just did.
So we can give a oop. Yep. Definitely not a penis. Whoa. These little uh, lit up bulbs become useful later on in the game when it comes time to construct our base. So, <clears throat> No Man's Sky 1.1 and 1.2 Pathfinder, um, they, um, they introduced some new things which were kind of fun that made exploring uh, a little bit easier, basically the quality of life. Uh, it, you know, you kind of expect that the, if you have the three pillars of the game, um, exploration, resource mining, and resource and using those resources to build and fuel your things, um, <clears throat> as you progress through the game, you become better and better at those. And that's true. In 1.1 and 1.2, you had bases in, uh, introduced in 1.1. Oh, we're getting down there. Shoot. Six minutes to my starship? We need to find a cave. Um, so, as I was saying, you uh, do get better at those three pillars. You have bases which uh, were able to help a bit there. And the uh, vehicles you could make to go explore terrain and stuff. But, they were sort of they weren't really integrated with the story. Let's get back up under here. There we go. They weren't really integrated with the story in any way. There were sort of things you did on the side that were kind of fun. <clears throat> also freighters and stuff like that. But now, <clears throat> um, I don't know if freighters have been woven into, woven into the full experience or if they're still a side quest. But I do know that building a base is central to one of the storylines in the game now. One of the major plot elements. Basically, the universe of No Man's Sky is built on four and a half races. I guess you could say five races. If you want to call them races. <clears throat> you have the three core races that inhabit each uni uh, the, that inhabit the galaxies. The Gek, the Viking, and the um, the robots, whatever they're called. One second, what are they called? Uh, the Corvax. <clears throat> and throughout the lore of the game, you start learning what the what the all three races kind of are about, how they came to be, how they interact with each other. The Gek are the firstborn. They're the first sentient race in the in that appeared in the in Atlas's galaxies. They're technological and um they're technological that's a big freaking creature. It's passive. <clears throat> The technological might <clears throat> basically allowed them to dominate the, the galaxies for a very long time. They were quite destructive. Even though to look at them now, you wouldn't think they think so. But they were. Um, at some point, the. Uh, And they were explorers, or <clears throat> conquesters and explorers. The Corvax, they're sort of the closest thing, I guess you could say, to an ally to the to um, to Atlas. They're all about. Discovery. Scientific research and endeavors. It's good that we have these shelters that we found along the way. I do need to recharge my life support though. 
Like I said, the only way to do it is Thamium. So we'll just keep scanning and fi hopefully finding Thamium along the way back. If not, it is available in space. It's kind of a pain in mind in space, though. I mean, it's not difficult, it's just tedious. I wonder if there are ship upgrades that help with that. So the uh, Corvax, they're the... Ooh, hello. They're the scientific research entities. They're uh, a <clears throat> largely mechanical, or largely digital life form. And uh, they all live in sort of a hive mind interconnected. Sharing all their knowledge. And what they call the Convergence. And we'll learn more about that later. Then you have the uh, Viking. The Viking are a very um, aggressive race. Steeped with honorable traditions, but um, a very warlike race. And they rebel against the Sentinels. Hey, those are shadows of flying creatures. Whoa! Now that's pretty cool. cool. A gigantic flock of these things flying over this planet. Wow. Oh yeah, No Man's Sky got a graphical update too. They increased the resolution of the textures and did a good job of tuning up performance. So the landscapes just look more detailed. I was on this <clears throat> lush red planet once. It was ridiculous. Little Q space bar to traverse that gap. We've already traveled 5,000 units on foot. <clears throat> so it looks like we should be able to get back in time for this episode, get our ship spaceborne. So it takes a uh, half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on your luck, it seems. Depending on how quickly you're able to find um, Heridium. Now, you know what's going to be funny? If I go over to the top of this hill over here, I bet there's Heridium right next door. I need to build another car right sheet. I'll just do that now. Um, uh, I don't have any room for it. Crazy. Oh, I know what I can do. Um, well, <clears throat> don't need that. There we go. And send that over to the ship because it'll stack up to five tall. And we are ready. Oh yeah, we also have this thing to fix too. Need some carbon. <clears throat> Let's just kill this plant. Let's surrender its carbon. All right. And we get that and we're able to extract the nanite clusters. So the nanite clusters are, again, they're going to be really important. Getting all of our stuff done here. All right. What do we got going on? Starship pulse engine. Pulse engine repaired. Pulse engine fueled somewhat. Awakenings, all systems functional. Seek answers among the stars. Pick up some free zinc. And I don't I want some more iron. Want some more iron before I depart.
All right, <clears throat> the pulse engine is fully charged. Launch thruster is fully charged. Life support. Fully charged on Thamium. We have a little bit of Thamium to spare. We are ready to get ourselves airborne into space. So let's take off. Boom. Shift. We thrust out into space. Welcome to the Dwina system in the Euclid Galaxy. Full stop. Let's see what we got as far as our log is concerned. Use the Starship Scanner to pinpoint the location of the signal. The signal. Signal beacon triangulated. And there it is. Looks like it's on that small moon. And this is where we're going to leave off episode one. Having just reached space in No Man's Sky, 1.3 Atlas Rises. I hope you like the new start to this uh, <clears throat> to this series. If you have any questions or want to see uh, things that's going on, I will try to find them in the appropriate time. Like I said, this, this whole show is going to be filled with spoilers, so be wary of that. Tune in on episode number two when we take a look at this signal beacon to find out what the heck is really going on. Until then, keep flying and stay shiny. Goodbye!